Good afternoon, apes, and happy Tuesday. It is a beautiful Tuesday here today. Every day is beautiful here at the Daily Peel Global Headquarters. But today, specifically Tuesday, January 9th of 2024, is even more beautiful than most of us expected. Uh, so we're definitely happy to be here. Happy that you guys could join us here today, and you already know what's going on. We are going through the Daily Peel. We got Daily Peel number 622 up today. Uh, we're going to be going over everything that's going on in markets yesterday. A little bit later start than usual today, but hey, better late than never. Markets were off to a bit of an interesting start, as always, you know, a little bit rocky on the downside. NASDAQ's the only one that's actually in positive territory so far here today, and it looks like the Russell 2K and other small caps are getting absolutely brutalized as usual. Uh, they're definitely used to it at this point, though, so we can't really feel too bad for them. We got some interesting stuff to go over here today at the Daily Peel. Uh, some interesting stuff over the weekend, especially out of Congress. You know, we spent so much time talking about monetary policy, but we got to talk about fiscal policy as well. So we'll be diving into that here today. Obviously, a lot of the stock booms that you guys love to see. Then most importantly was some uh, some interesting credit data that came out over the weekend related to December. And that's exactly why we are where we are today. You guys probably can't see it here. I'm going to knock over my green screen if I move too much. But we're down at bankruptcy court today. It's where a lot of Americans are likely going to find themselves over the coming months as well. Because those bankruptcy, well, bankruptcies haven't been spiking yet. But debt burdens happen along with that. We might be able to see some bankruptcies going forward. Who knows, maybe even our first story congressional leaders will be down at bankruptcy court as well. They're certainly taking the United States there, and uh, so we'll see exactly what's going on. But most importantly today, I mean, check this out, guys. How cool is this image thing right here? Way better than me just rambling on and on telling you exactly what the numbers were for the day prior. We wanted to showcase this in a much easier, more digestible way. And as you can see, WSO Alpha portfolio yesterday was up 1.31%. Uh, we did underperform the S&P on the day, outperform the Dow, way underperform the NASDAQ, but we are still outperforming our benchmark for the year. Keep in mind, guys, we benchmark to the NASDAQ. Beating the S&P is just simply way too easy for us and the team of apes over there. So we had to up the challenge a little bit. And then, of course, we're always getting some interesting moves from Bitcoin and Ethereum. We do hold both Bitcoin and Ethereum in the WSO Alpha portfolio. So even if you are a bit of a crypto nerd, uh, don't want to pay attention to the stocks all too much, definitely go ahead and check that out because there's some stuff in there for you. Please speak a bit slower. I see that comment right there. Absolutely. I'm happy to speak a bit slower for you guys. I definitely get ahead of myself. So if anything's wrong, feel free to just let me know and I could definitely chill out a little bit. So thank you very much for the comment and for the heads up there. All right. So market snapshot, like we said, you know, it was a pretty good day for the WSO Alpha portfolio. Fairly good day for markets overall yesterday, especially the NASDAQ. Uh, we were finally getting that rise. It seemed like a continuation of the December Santa Claus rally that we've been getting used to over the past couple of weeks but didn't actually get to experience it so far 2024. So we were very glad to see that. It's always good to see a portfolio going higher. Uh, but of course, it was a great day for everybody that wasn't named Boeing or that wasn't on a certain Alaskan Airlines plane that we'll talk about in just a little bit as well. But before we get into any big news of the day, we do have some uh, headline stories that we wanted to go over. Deforestation is ongoing and rapid over at Nike. By deforestation, of course, we mean their separation with Mr. Tiger Woods, the greatest athlete of all time. I saw an article yesterday called him one of the greatest athletes in history. I don't know if you could call really any golfer one of the greatest athletes in history. I'd call him one of the best golfers. He's clearly the GOAT. But in terms of great athletes, I think more like Bo Jackson, uh, Michael Jordan, not necessarily somebody who can swing a stick at a ball. All right. And then Samsung did come out with some disappointing guidance overall. They basically said they're expecting a roughly third plunge uh, in profits overall going into the fourth quarter. Definitely not a great start to the day or start to 2024 for them and then of course grocery stores haven't really gotten the message yet food prices continue to plummet in december they are absolutely on a uh, just kind of a swan dive but grocery stores nobody told them because prices are still incredibly high i'm pretty sure i bought three or four things at the store this weekend and it was like 171 dollars absolutely ridiculous but we can talk about my spending habits and all the problems going on there another time for now we can also focus on some insider transactions the insider transaction ratio did enter bearish territory officially yesterday and over the weekend. It was kind of leading up to it last week and then officially crossed into that territory on the day yesterday. That basically just means that insiders, you know, the people making all these decisions at companies, deciding uh, who to fire, who gets paid and all that good stuff, they are officially in bearish territory in terms of their purchases. All right, so the big story that broke over the weekend here is obviously related to Congress. We talked recently about how Congress is one of the greatest hedge funds in the world, but 
Turns out it's also one of the greatest reality TV shows. We have known this for a couple of decades, but it seems to be just getting put even more in the limelight over the past couple of weeks, and especially over the past couple of years. But what happened? Okay, so Congress obviously has to figure out how to spend money for the federal government. That's one of the jobs of this legislature. Typically, historically, what they do is sit down, take their time, and pencil out 12 appropriations bills that uh, they end up signing for the year that actually fund the government for you know the preceding 12 months and for that relevant fiscal year. Over the past decades, and especially in recent years, congressional leaders have absolutely not been able to do so. They are very much like uh, kind of like a fifth grade classroom when you have kids having beef. They just absolutely cannot seem to get anything done or agree on anything whatsoever. So instead of actually passing 12 appropriations bills, the best they've been able to do is one headlining bill. And so that's what the news broke over this weekend was. Basically, congressional leaders decided what that headline spending figure was going to be. So this doesn't mean that anything has actually been enacted into law. All it means is that House Speaker Mike Johnson, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer have agreed on the headline number, and that, of course, is this $1.59 trillion. Of course, that's the headline number, like we kind of alluded to there. It is a lot more complicated than that. The government does have two deadlines to worry about this time. They've gone ahead and followed the advice of all the best investors in the world and diversified the day in which the government could shut down. Uh, but they've done it a little bit safer this time and kind of splitting up agencies by themselves. That first one to worry about is going to be January 19th at 11.59 a.m. That is when spending will run out for certain parts of the government, like housing, transportation, veterans affairs, military construction, the energy department, basically just the most random amalgamation of, of agencies that they could have slapped together at once. That's going to run out on the 19th. And because these people really can't seem to do anything properly, the rest of the government is going to run out on February 2nd. That, of course, is Groundhog Day. We certainly hope if the government does shut down that it doesn't follow a Bill Murray-style Groundhog Day and actually end up repeating every single day. But essentially what's going on here is con congressional members are currently in the process of kind of deciding exactly how they're going to be allocating that money. So far, the only thing that's been agreed upon is a massive $886 billion price tag for the U.S. military. And 704 billion at least for the non-defense kind of discretionary domestic side of things but of course there's an additional very nice 69 billion dollar option to increase that non-defense domestic spending as well going forward but i think one of the interesting things to see here is this 886 billion number that is an absolute record for the department of defense if we go ahead over here this is uh, worldpopulationreview.com this is their data on military spending around the world and essentially if we go ahead and take a scroll down a little bit they put together this nice list here for us i'm not too sure if you guys can see it right there i'm going to try to get it into a view where you can actually see these countries names uh but let's see here maybe if i zoom out a little bit that'd be a little bit easier oh perfect okay or i can just zoom in here so look at this this is uh 2020 number so very much not updated but it gives you the general idea of what's going on the united states spends 750 billion dollars compared to 237 billion by the next largest being china and everybody else is nowhere even remotely close if we go ahead down and scroll to the actual kind of full list here this will show every country's military spending the u.s is about five percent of the world's population but in any given year it makes up close to about 45 percent of total military spending so Shout out to anybody in those Western European countries that have free healthcare, free schooling, and all that jazz. You're welcome for the defense and why you guys can afford that. So that is largely the reason why, because the U.S. is basically plays the role of the defender of the Western world. And that's exactly what you see, the $886 billion going to that fund. So we'll definitely see how that plays out over the next coming days. They've kind of agreed on a top line number, but actually how to allocate those funds still has to get put in place. Otherwise, those parts of the government that we talked about earlier are going to shut down. That total number is going to be a grand $1.66 trillion. Uh, can't wait to see when that erupts into a fiery, uh, or I guess a dumpster fire of debt and whatever else happens over the coming decades. All right, let's go ahead and move into some stock movers of the day. Crocs, we already knew that they were the drippiest shoe manufacturer out there, but that just got even more confirmed yesterday. I got my pink Crocs sitting over there. I should have been wearing them today for the actual review guide here, but unfortunately, my girlfriend doesn't actually allow me to wear those because she says they're too hideous. But... We all know that they're the drippy issues in the world. Crocs was expecting to see a roughly 1% to 4% decline in Q4 sales during this year. But they came out yesterday and said, actually, fuck that. We're going to get a 1% increase in Q4. Investors got hyped up because now full year 2023 revenue is set to $3.95 billion, a big 11% spike year over year. And keep in mind, this is during the same period when the world's largest shoe manufacturer, those guys that are committing all the deforestation of uh, separating from Tiger Woods, as I mentioned earlier, in Nike, they came out and basically said they're going to see a revenue decline this year. 
Crocs, clearly their shoes are way drippier, so they're not going to be seeing that decline. But personally, we can't wait to see athletes like LeBron James start to ink deals with Crocs and Hey Dudes. I think they would look super good on the court. How cool would that be to see LeBron like dunk on somebody wearing a pair of Crocs? So that just sounds like the most absolutely humiliating thing of all time, and I would pay money to see it every single day. All right, moving on down to NVIDIA. This really is the epitome of Miley Cyrus's We Can't Stop song. NVIDIA absolutely cannot stop just hitting all-time high after all-time high. This was something we knew in 2023. Kind of got over it a little bit towards the end of the year, but we're right back where we came from. Uh, the Consumer Electronics Show is going on. We're going to dive deeper into that in tomorrow's edition for Thought Banana. We'll go over everything CES so far. But one of the big things that happened is NVIDIA came out and got the nerds going for the day with a lot of the chips that they've announced. Keep in mind, these chips are very specialized for different purposes, but they released a bunch of nerd shit like AI, PC graphics. Uh, it's some nonsense. You guys know I'm not a scientist. I mean, who knows what's going on there? The real cool stuff was new partnership with companies like Amgen, Lee Auto, and Getty Images for different kind of generative AI purposes. Uh, so Roma Armageddon is well on the way to happening. Luckily, we haven't seen it just yet, but it certainly is in the process. And the video is patient zero on that front. All right, moving on down to Boeing. I mean, what an absolute piece of shit over the past couple of years. This is just completely atrocious. They're still having problems with that 737 MAX model. Specifically, this time, it's a 737 MAX 9. And even more specifically, it was the one being flown on Alaska Airlines Flight 1282. Uh, literally, the door just completely flew off. I don't know if you guys saw that video. I didn't link it in here because it is kind of a fucked up video. But essentially, everybody was just chilling and enjoying their flight. And then all of a sudden, a part of the plane absolutely just flew off. Flew from about 16,000 feet high, 20 minutes into the flight. Uh, so obviously, they just turned around, managed to land safely. Thank God, no injuries. But imagine you're that guy sitting there at that window seat. You're hyped to go out, go ahead and look out at the night sky for the entirety of your flight. And then all of a sudden, bang, you are part of the night sky. And thankfully, once again, nobody got injured this time around. But to make sure that doesn't happen going forward, the FAA has grounded all 170 operational 737 MAX 9s in the country. Uh, fuselage maker Spirit Aerosystems got absolutely bullied on the day two, losing 11.13%. And Alaska Air fell just 0.21% because it really wasn't their fault, but it's definitely not a good look for the airline. Energy stocks also had a tough day, so we went ahead and threw a party at Greta Thunberg's house. I don't know if any of you guys were there, but we were dancing on the graves of these oil companies for the day at the very least. Kingpin of, of OPEC Saudi Arabia came out and said that they were going to be cutting their export oil prices by about $2 per barrel. Nobody really saw that coming or knows exactly why the kingdom decided to do so, but clearly that signals they think they have to artificially spur demand in some way. Uh, at the same time, on the same day, a lot of U.S. banks upgraded the U.S. oil majors, including Exxon, Chevron, and Conoco Phillips, of course. Truist and Piper Sandler tried to get the stocks back up, and they simply couldn't overcome what was going on out of the Middle East in the OPEC Plus group. All right, the best financial advice I have ever seen. Let's get into Thought Banana here. I don't know if you guys know comedian and personal finance guru Tim Dillon, but he is one of the greatest quotes of all time when it comes to personal finance, and that, of course, is that debt will set you free. Uh, so he said this in context of what he would tell people uh, back in, like, 2006. He was, like, a mortgage seller or something like that. But it is certainly apt for today, and especially what's going on with consumer credit balances. Let's go ahead and take a look over at the chart that I have here for the day. This is from Bloomberg. I don't have a Bloomberg subscription, so don't ask me how I was actually able to get my hands on the chart here. But this is exactly what we're looking at. U.S. consumer borrowing soars. As you guys can see, this was for the month of December. We are at a spike that we haven't seen since March of 2022. What's going on in March of 2022, you may ask? Oh, yeah, that's right. The Federal Reserve started raising interest rates. We were coming off that basically zero bound. And we also did see the beginning of the collapses of the three of uh, the three largest banking collapses in American history began that month. Definitely a great comparison, something to make you feel very comfortable after seeing credit surge $23.8 billion in December, more than four times the amount seen in October and just show, or excuse me, not December, in November, uh, more than four times that seen in October as we got ramped up for the holiday season to so go ahead and buy our friends and family a bunch of shit they don't need that they're probably in the return aisle for right now. But the vast majority of that $19.1 billion was classified as revolving credit outstanding. That basically means credit cards. The remaining is non-revolving, which is uh, cars, you know, uh, personal loans, college education, more like binge drinking, but whatever, whatever you need to get through it. I mean, it is four years of fun, so definitely won't hate on that. But this data does fly in the face of something that we talked about earlier this week. JP Morgan came out and said that there was $1 trillion in excess savings, uh, apparently laying under a mattress. I don't know how they got cameras into my bedroom and saw me stuff in that cash underneath my mattress. Clearly, they did it to you, too because they're saying that Americans have $1 trillion in excess savings. 
I don't know how that can possibly be true given this data because I feel like American consumers would have dipped into those savings before taking on these higher rates, especially as it comes to credit cards. Maybe American consumers just aren't thinking that much and I'm giving them a little bit too much credit. That does tend to be the uh, the trend that we see is that consumers disappoint to the downside, especially people like myself. But we'll see if that happens going forward. Consumer spending is about 65 to 70% of the U.S. economy in any given year. So seeing debt balances run up like this, we might be seeing people line up at the bankruptcy office where I am today rather than outside the grocery store or somewhere else that they can go ahead and spend that money. Will we reach a vaping point? Are we going to see bankruptcies and defaults on mass? If so, how is that going to play out? Have you paid off your credit card balances for the holidays yet? I know I certainly have. I'm probably going to have to take up a long to pay off that credit card balance, uh, which I'm pretty sure is great financial advice because like Tim Dillon said, that will set you free. But somebody disagrees with Tim Dillon here. We have Mr. Benjamin Franklin. You guys might have heard of him. Pretty smart guy shitting around back in the late 1700s. And he said, rather go to bed without dinner than to rise in debt. Clearly, American consumers did not listen to this founding father, notably not the president, but a great envoy to France and uh, definitely loved the ladies. Yes, yeah, so this is not financial advice. Thank you very much for covering my ass there with the team. Uh, we definitely don't want to open up to legal obligations. But, you know, with me going like this, we certainly do that to ourselves on a daily basis. All right, that's going to be the show for today. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this beautiful live stream. Hope you guys are loving your Tuesday and having a great week out there. Thanks again for joining us today. And as always, apes, happy trading. Bye. And thanks to you, my listeners at Wall Street Oasis. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them my way, patrick at wallstreetoasis.com. Until next time.